This video is going to take a look at the four functional interfaces that are provided with Java 8. So first we're going to try and understand why we might need each of these functional interfaces and then we're going to take a look at them to understand how they actually work and when we might be using them. Lastly we're going to take a look at the extended functional interfaces that are provided with Java 8 which include the unary operator and the binary operator. If you find this video useful please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more weekly videos on Java do consider subscribing. So Java 8 introduces us to these four new functional interfaces but it also includes many other features and amongst those features they're actually referencing the functional interfaces that we're going to look at. So in this video I'm going to take a look at the stream API that also uses a lot of these functional interfaces just so we have some kind of reference point on when it might be used in a real life situation and why it is required. So the first functional interface we're going to take a look at is called function and we can search for it with double shift and then typing in function so we can see this up here. So the function interface takes in one type of argument and then it returns another type. It has just this single method down below called apply and we can see that it takes in type t and then it returns type r. So if we head back to our stream API and select the map method, we can see just down below that the map method accepts the function functional interface. So the map function itself will be transforming the input that we're passing to the stream. So in our case, we have one, two, three, four, and five. And let's say we just want to return what is double that. So within the Lambda expression, it accepts one argument, which we're going to call num and then it returns another type of argument. So in our case, we'll just do num multiplied by two. So that's the function functional interface where it accepts type T and returns type R. The second functional interface we're going to look at is called predicate and we can search for it. So this is the predicate functional interface and we can see at the top that it accepts just a single type of argument. So in the method for this functional interface, it's called test and it accepts that single argument. But every time that we use this functional interface, it will return a Boolean. So if we head back into our application class and our stream API, we can use the filter method from the stream and we can see below that it accepts a predicate. So using this predicate, we can see that it accepts just a single argument. So in our case, it will be the number. And then the implementation of, of how we're using that number, it must always return a Boolean. So for us, let's say we just want to filter out all the numbers that are less than five. We could do number less than five. And that is how we're using the predicate functional interface within the filter method. So we're passing in that single argument and then we have the implementation that will always return a Boolean. And whereas with the function method, we have that single argument, but we're always returning an integer, and that's how it differs. The next functional interface we're going to take a look at is called consumer. So we can search for consumer. We have it down below. So we can see that this functional interface has one type of generic that is used, and we can see the method down below is called accept and accept takes in that single argument and then the method body each time will however return void. So this is why it's different to the predicate and also the function because it's returning void each time. If we go back into our application class and the stream API, we can see that the for each method call will take in a consumer. So the for each is known as a terminal operation. So it's how we conclude a stream. And what we would like to do is let's say we just want to print out each of our numbers. So we can type in for each. And then this Lambda expression will first take in a value and this will be our number. And each implementation of the, our Lambda expression has to return void. So we'll just do system out and then we'll do that number. And now we've successfully used the consumer functional interface where we're passing in an argument 
and the implementation will return void. So we can actually run our stream API into the console and we can see all the numbers being printed out. And we can see the number two and four are printed down below. The fourth functional interface we're going to take a look at is called supplier. And if we look at the functional interface itself, once again, there's just a single generic right at the top and it has this single method called get. So unlike all the other functional interfaces, there isn't actually an argument being passed in, but every time it will return that type T. So if we head back to the application class, there wasn't really an example I could provide with the stream API of how the supplier works, but I can create my own supplier just down below. So I'll type in supplier and the generic that we're going to use is let's just say it's always going to return an integer for us and we'll just call this int supplier. And now we have the implementation. So we know that with the supplier, there isn't any argument going to be passed in to our get function. So we'll have empty brackets at the start, but every time we now expect it to return an integer to us. So let's just return the number four. And then down below, I can just system out the int supplier and then I will call that get function. So if I run the application, we can see that that number four has been printed just down below once again. So in the final part of this video, I'm just going to take a look at some of the extended functional interfaces and what they are. So what the consumer predicate and function all have in common is that they all have a single method that accepts an argument. So let's say we wanted to use one of these functional interfaces, but passing in two arguments, this is where we would use the by consumer, the by predicate, or the by function. So if I just search for by consumer, we can see it's just like the consumer with that single accept method. However, now we're passing in two arguments and still receiving void, whereas with just the regular consumer, it's just one argument and you receive void. I can also do the same for by predicate. So we have two arguments being passed in, but still we're only receiving the Boolean. And then the same for by function. Two arguments are being passed in, and then we're only receiving just the single. So that's three of the extended classes that we have from the functional interface, which are all of the bys, and it allows you to pass in two arguments. Then we also have the unary and the binary operator, which are really just extensions of our function, functional interface. So if we look at the unary operator, this is very much just like a normal function. However, the difference is that the argument that is being passed in is of the same type as what is being returned. So in our function, so in our example here, we're actually just passing in a number and we're, we're receiving another number. This could just be a unary operator because we're passing in exactly the same type as what we're receiving. And then if we look at the binary operator, we can see that the binary operator extends the by function and just like the by function, it accepts two arguments. However, these are of the same type and then once again, it returns that exact same type when we call the accept function on our binary operator. So that concludes this video where we've taken a look at the four main functional interfaces. We've had a look at how they can work within the stream API and also by creating our own supplier. We've then had a look at the three extensions that they can have where they have uh, an additional argument. And we've also looked at the unary operator and the binary operator.